Barbara. And I'm Karen, and we're the Sync Sister. Tech Fit on the Context app for groups and sharing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is groups in the Context app. And let's go into our Context app, which the icon looks like this. I'm just going to tap on it and bring it up. Um, you have the ability to organize contacts by groups. If you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, there is a button that says groups. I'm going to go ahead and tap on it, and it's going to bring up a list on the left of my groups. I have quite a few groups. Um, you'll notice I have a group. The first one is always all, so that's going to show all the groups for your iCloud account. And then the groups that you may have set up. I have one add to MailChimp. I have one for Christmas card. Uh, Christmas card print again, needs address, companies, do not disturb group. I have a lot of different groups in my contacts, uh, which is a great way to organize things. Unfortunately, you cannot create groups on your iPad or your iPhone at this time within the contacts app. There are other apps that you could download that will allow you to do that, but right now um, you can't do it within Apple's contacts app. Hopefully they add that functionality soon. Right. Uh, but you can create them on your Macintosh or if you don't have a Mac and you have a PC, you can go to iCloud.com and log into your iCloud account and then you can create and organize groups. But we're just going to show you how you can go ahead and you can look at a particular group right now. So I have a lot of contacts. I'm just going to show you too. If I scroll all the way to the bottom, well, I guess that doesn't work because I have two iCloud accounts. If I go into all my contacts, and then I say done. You'll notice that there's a check mark by every group now. And if I say done, and I come out, I've got all my contacts. I'm just gonna go all the way to the bottom, because if you go all the way to the bottom, I'll show you how many contacts you have. I have 1,438. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice for me to have groups. Okay, now I wanted to show you that, so I'm going to go back to groups, and now we're going to pick one of my groups. So let's say that I just want to look at um, people who are in my... Horse lover um, animal emails. Horse lover <laughs> emails. I'm not sure I have that many in there. Okay. And then I'll say done. I only have one in there. That's a new group. Let's not look at that one. Let's look at companies. If I just wanted to look at um, companies that I might need to, to get information from, um, different people that are, you know, contacts that are companies, companies. hotels businesses. and businesses and things like that. I can't remember what the name of that glass company is, but if I come in here, it may jog my memory. So I don't have to look through all 1,400. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this list. I only have 132 in here. That's so it makes awesome. it yeah. makes it a little easier to see More things. manageable. Right. If So right now we are in the group, and if I go to the top, it'll tell you what group you're in. Oh, I guess it won't. I'm sorry. You have to go back into groups, and then you'll see which one is checked. It looks like we have both of these checked now. You can have multiple groups checked. Mm -hmm. Now we just have companies. So if I go out now, <clears throat> and I just have companies here, if I add a contact, it will go right into that group. So this is a way that you could at least add to, add to a group. Right. Uh, but just make sure, and it'll also go into your all contacts as well, but it will be by group. Okay. So I, I find it nice to always remember to go back into groups and show all contacts when you're done looking at right. a particular group so you don't, you don't get confused. Yeah, it is a little limiting on the iPad and the iPhone right now, the, the groups thing. Um, we right. keep hoping with each system upgrade that it will, they will make it so that you can create groups on the iPad. So right. stay tuned. Hopefully that will happen. Right. Or soon. one of the most common <laughs> things that you might want to do with a group is email everybody in a group. And unfortunately, uh -huh. you can't do that right now either. On so the iPad. On the iPad. You can do it on your computer. On your computer, yeah. And you can do it at iCloud.com. So. All right. No, let's so, talk about sharing a little bit. Okay. Um, sharing contacts um, is a very useful um, thing to do. I have contacts in my address book, and I want to give one of them to a colleague or a friend. There's several different ways that you can share a complete contact. Um, so if I go in here and I pick um, a contact, okay, I'm going to click on a contact, uh, then your contact comes up, and then at the bottom... Over here, you'll see share contact. So I'm going to tap on that, and up comes a box. And what this box is, it's showing you all the different ways that you can share your contact. 
And if you work on the iPad at all, you know this sharing box is always very similar and then it's kind of customized to whatever app you're in, which right now we're in the contact app. So it's telling us we could message our contact, we could mail it, or here, this little dot, 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 and they call it a more button. This is something that's becoming very common now. You'll see it in lots of applications. And what that means is if you tap on it, it's going to show you more functionality. So we already saw that we could message and mail. It's also telling us we could post it to Pinterest. So if I turn that on, and then it you know, had more functions that it could do, they would be listed. And you can have them on or off. Then I hit done, showing right there. <clears throat> I'm not sure why you would want to put a contact on Pinterest. I'm not either, but you <laughs> but can do it. <laughs> who knows? But anyways, um, a really common, and then we, if we look at the top up here, this is showing my, my AirDrop. And AirDrop is a really nice feature, and it was, I think, uh, the iPhone 5. I think it was 7. I think it was seven. Oh, System 7. Yeah, that added it. Um, added that. And a, an iPhone 5 or something. Yeah, higher. 5S maybe. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so if you're in close contact with another phone or iPad that um, has AirDrop features, you'll see their pictures will show up. Like you can see here's my phone and here's Barb's phone. And if you had a Mac, it would show up too. <clears throat> right. So when you're on the same Wi Fi in close contact, the people will show up that you can AirDrop to. So if I pick my phone and I'm going to AirDrop it. And did you hear that little ding? It's yeah. a little alert that came up on my phone here. This is my phone now. Yep. And so she's going to... Yep, so it says, uh, AirDrop Barbara's iPad would like to share contact card, Alpha V. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to accept that. And then it's going to come in and it's going to say, well, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to create a new contact or do you want to add it to an existing contact? And I'll go ahead and just create a new contact. And then it comes up and I can do all the same things like we did when we added a new contact or edit. I can go put in any of the information if I have other information to add. In this case, I don't. So I'll just say done. And now I've got that contact. That's awesome. So that's AirDrop. If you didn't have AirDrop um, features or you wanted to do it a, a, with someone who wasn't on the same Wi-Fi as you, a good way to share a contact is through message. So I'm going to tap on the message. And then I'm just going to enter. I'll enter again my phone. And there it is. Because she's in my address book. Okay. So it came so up. So it came up. And then I'm going to send it. <clears throat> and then if we bring in my phone, I'll take a second. You can see there it is. So close and, that. And Karen has her notification for May, our messaging set up so that it will come up and show an alert box when she gets a message. And then mm -hmm. she has to either close or reply to it. I'm going to close it because I want to actually go into messages and show you what it looks like. So when it comes up, you're going to see um, just really the name in kind of a gray box. Um, if there were a picture for Alpha Phi, it would show up there in the picture. And when you tap on it, again, it's going to come up just like it did when she shared it via AirDrop, asking me if I want to create a new contact or add to existing. Or I could reshare it to somebody else. So um, if we click on the sharing again, you could mail would work exactly the same as message, except for it would right. send you an email. Um, the thing that I like about sharing contacts is, you know, if somebody wants so-and-so's phone number, it's kind of nice just to give them their whole, all their contact info because then they have their address, their email, they have everything. Right. So it's a great way to share your contacts with others. And one more thing about AirDrop that we should mention is AirDrop, like Karen said, you have to be on the same Wi-Fi and you have to be in close proximity. Um, Apple's AirDrop drop technology uses a very secure algorithm to transfer the data um, to the other device. So it's very, um, it's a very good thing to use if you're sending um, sensitive information to. A lot of businesses will use it in conferences and things like that because it's a very tight and secure encrypted way of transferring a file. It's hard for anyone to grab that if they're not the intended recipient. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching the Sync Sisters Tech Fit. And please subscribe to our channel.